Mount Bromo is an active volcano in East Java, Indonesia. It's really a magnificent experience visiting this area, and if you're considering coming here for yourself, this video is for you. We're going to review some tips and tricks to help you get the most of your time here. Let's start with the location. If you're looking at a map, Mount Bromo is located to the southeast of Surabaya. Since Bromo is one of the most popular volcanoes to visit in Indonesia, there are many companies that offer tours. The most common is the Jeep Tour, where people typically pay between 500 and 900 thousand rupiah, and the local guide will drive you around in a Jeep. This is probably the most convenient, but also the most expensive. The cheapest way is to simply walk into Bromo from the nearest town called Samoro, and there are plenty of guest houses you could find there. I believe the walk is about 45 minutes to one hour depending on where you're staying. When I visited Bromo, I ended up finding a guest house in the city of Probolingo and I rented a scooter to explore Bromo without a guide to have the freedom of exploring by ourselves. We found a local guy who rents scooters and his pricing is as follows. It was 150,000 rupiah for a 125cc and 200,000 rupiah for a 150cc. We chose the cheaper, which maybe wasn't actually the best idea, and I'll explain a little more of this later. But for anyone who's interested in getting in contact with the guy who rents scooters in Probolingo, I'll leave his number in the description of this video, so you can message him on WhatsApp. Since we wanted to be at Bromo for sunrise, we left Probolingo around 2.30 a.m. Google Maps said it would take about two hours to ride from there, but it actually took a bit longer, so if you're leaving from Probolingo, I'd recommend leaving no later than 2 a.m. to make sure you have plenty of time to find a nice spot for sunrise. One very important thing to note is that before the sun comes up, it's going to be very cold. In Probolingo, it actually wasn't that cold, but the entire drive to Bromo was uphill, and we increased elevation quite a bit, and the temperature dropped significantly, so dress appropriately. Once we arrived to the national park, we had to pay two separate entrance fees. One was 20,000 and the other was 220,000. Once you enter the national park, you'll drive down a road that leads you to the caldera called the Sea of Sand. It's a vast plain of black volcanic sand. It looks incredible when you can actually see it. Arriving before 5 a.m., it was still pitch black, so we couldn't see anything, which made for a really interesting adventure. We were pretty much just blindly following Google Maps, and we headed toward a viewpoint called King Kong Hill. So you don't actually go to the crater of Bromo first. For sunrise, it's best to find a viewpoint from the adjacent mountain. We rode for about 25 minutes in the sea of sand before we found the road leading up to the viewpoint. At this time, it was around 5 a.m. and the sun was already kind of starting to light up the sky a little bit. This is when I started to regret the decision for choosing the less powerful scooter. When we started our ascent up the road, a local guy on his motorcycle offered a ride to the top, but we respectfully declined. And about five minutes later, he pulls up next to us as we're two people on a 125cc scooter pulling full throttle going around the switchback turns at a casual speed of around eight miles an hour. We could have made it to the top ourselves, but since we were in a crunch for time, Pema hopped off the back and we paid the guy 100,000 rupiah to drive her up to the top. If you remember, for only 50,000 more, I could have had a more powerful engine to get up. I know, I made the mistake, so you can learn from it. <laughs> we got to the top of the hill just as the sun was about to rise, and to be honest, it was a little disappointing since there were hundreds of other people here. There's a railing where people were lined up shoulder to shoulder, but we realized the path wrapped around, so we walked a bit further to find a trail leading up to some more secluded viewpoints. We made it to a nice spot just in time to catch the sun bursting at the horizon, exposing Mount Bromo along with four other volcanoes in this beautiful landscape. The nice thing about not being on an organized tour is that you can stay here for as long as you like. About 15 minutes after the sunrise, almost all of the Jeep tours had left and we spent some time taking some funny photos with these travelers we just met from France. After a while, we drove back down the mountain and across the sea of sand to the base of Bromo Volcano. Typically, people hike up to the top of the crater so you can see into the volcano, but when we were there, unfortunately, the hike was forbidden since it erupted three days prior and the crater was closed for safety reasons. We were a little disappointed that we couldn't walk up to the crater, but thankfully, we were still able to fly up there, and this is what we saw. part about 
about renting a scooter was having the freedom to ride around wherever we want and it was really fun exploring the sea of sand freely and just not being restricted to a group tour. After we left the national park, it was a whole new adventure. When we rode up here earlier, it was so dark that we couldn't see anything, but now we could see everything and the views are incredibly beautiful. Immediately after Mount Bromo, we rode to another amazing place called Marikaripura, which is a sacred waterfall about one hour away from Mount Bromo. If you have the time, it's really nice to visit Bromo in the morning, then Marikaripura right after that. If you're interested in more information about the waterfall, I have another video just like this packed with insight and tips about Marikaripura. Also, if you haven't already seen it, I have a more in-depth series bringing you along for the entire week's adventure here in East Java, so go check that out too. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and click that like button. If you have any questions about Bromo, feel free to drop a line in the comments and I'll do my best to answer any questions you may have. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.